Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. I'm so excited about the way we can get together around God's Word like this every day. I hope you have your Bible with you, notepad, pen. We're going to get right back into what we've been having a look at, how to fulfill God's plan and purpose in our lives by hearing His voice. Remember, we had a look yesterday at Jeremiah chapter 1, and God told him in verse 4, He says, The word of the Lord came to me. And he said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Before you were born, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now, listen to what God is saying here to him. He says, before you were born, before you ever formed in the womb, I knew you. That tells me we already existed before we were put into this earth. And we may not remember it, but God, we already existed with God and our life came forth from Him. Every single human that's been born into this earth was born for a reason. It says here, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now that's Jeremiah. Jeremiah was already set up as a prophet. If, if God was speaking to me, He would have said, the word of the Lord came to me saying, now, he didn't say this particularly to me this way, but um, if, if, if I was in that situation, he would have said, before you were born, I sanctified you and I ordained you a teacher to the nations. So through this program now, I'm fulfilling what God already established before I was born. In other words, I was born to do this. How many times have you heard people say that? I was born for this. When they say that, it's usually because now all of a sudden they feel successful because all our lives we are trying to find success. That's what the world really is. The biggest question is, why am I here? So many people ask those questions. What are we doing here? What's my purpose? What's my reason? And if you look at a lot of what's happening in the world today, it's people running around trying to find some meaning in life, trying to find purpose. Well, we're never going to find that purpose until we are born again and you hear from God exactly what that purpose is, what that call is. And once you know what it is, it's the same way when I discovered who I am, that God had called me to pastor, to teach the Word of God, to be an apostle, to plant, nation, to, to plant churches in nations and to speak the Word of God, when I discovered that call, all of a sudden, it's like my life just flowered. And it was so easy. I felt comfortable in it. I didn't struggle in it. I could literally say, I was born for this. And I would be 100% accurate. That's exactly why God sent me to the earth. Well, you are born for a reason. Every single one of us have been put here for a purpose. Well, how will I know it? Well, look at this. The Bible says, The word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord came to me. Now, when he says, The word of the Lord came to me, the word, the word. Now, we know from John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And then he says in verse 14, That word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So Jesus is the word. So, if the word of the Lord came to me saying, that means Jesus, even before he was born, was declaring this word into Elijah's, uh, into Jeremiah's life. So Jesus, before he was born as Jesus in the earth, he was already the word of God. And that word came to Jeremiah and said to him that he has a plan and a purpose for him. So obviously Jeremiah had heard that and was able to rise up and walk in it and be successful in it. Well, the same way God is speaking to you. If you have a look at Galatians chapter 4, it says in verse 6, Because you are sons of God, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So when you're born again, you know it. You sense, you suddenly know. If I ask somebody if they're born again, if they're saved, and they go, well, I don't really know. Well, then let's lead you to Jesus. Because once you are born again, you know it. There's a sense within you. I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. How does that happen? I can hear Him within me saying, you're a child of God. 
That's what he's saying there. He, and it's not something you hear in your ears. It's not a big ears voice that you're going to hear. Boom, you are born again. No, it's, this, it's that awareness, that knowledge. And it's that being led by the Spirit. Remember Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. As a born again child of God, we are led by the Spirit. Isn't that amazing? That's exciting. That is really good news. Now, I want to show you something. Under the old covenant, we saw here where Jeremiah says, the word of the Lord came to him saying, come with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're talking about God fulfilling his purpose for what we are called to. Now, I want to show you that even under the old covenant that God was speaking to his believers, look at verse 1. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Now, we're going to spend some time with this study. So just have a look at that word revelation. I want you to circle that in your Bible. It says the word of the Lord. Word of the Lord. If you underline word of the Lord and circle revelation. It puts those two together. Because here's the thing, we're going to see God speak in a way here that almost sounds audible. Most times when we hear the Word of God, it is not going to be audible. Now, I'm just putting that out there for now because we're going to spend some time and dig into that. But I want to show you something from this, the Word of the Lord and Revelation. Those two are linked, okay? Verse 2. It came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see and before the lamp of the before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was and while Samuel was lying down that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here I am verse 5 so he ran to Eli and said here I am for you called me so it was so tangible that Samuel thought Eli had called him. That's how, that's how clear it was to him. Eli says to Samuel, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and he lay down. Verse 6, the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered and said, I did not call, my son lie down again. So he didn't, you see, Eli's telling Samuel, you're hearing something, but I didn't call you. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, verse 8, the third time. So he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. <laughs> He's adamant. I'm, I'm hearing somebody call. There's no one in the house except you. So here I am. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Verse 9, therefore Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak Lord for your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Now listen again. Eli said to Samuel, he has some instruction from a man of God to this young boy. Go lie down, it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak Lord for your servant hears. Now, what do we know about faith when we've learned what faith is? First of all, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Paul also said the spirit of faith is having believed, I speak. So we activate faith, our first step of activation. Remember, faith without works is dead. So faith without corresponding action is dead. You can have faith. By hearing the word of God, you receive faith. So now you have faith. That's why sometimes people say, I don't understand how that could have happened to that person. They had so much faith. Yes, it's good to have faith. And we all who, if you hear the word of God, you have faith. But for that faith to go into action, I need to align my actions around the action of faith. So I need to have corresponding action. I need to move forward believing. When, when Jesus said to Peter, come, Jesus was walking on the water, and Peter said, if that's you, Lord, tell me, come. Jesus said, come. If Peter sat on the boat and said, I believe I can walk on water,
but he never got out the boat, he would never have walked on the water. He can sit there believing he walks on water. And I can promise you that when he got back to shore, stepped off the boat, he would have gone straight through the water to the, the sand underneath. He wouldn't have walked on that water, even though he believes he could walk on water because Jesus said, come. So for him to see the miracle manifest, when Jesus said, come, he had to step out the boat and he had to walk in action. And in that walking, that action, faith manifests and it does what the word was sent to do. Now, very often, the first step of faith is that speaking. Just the same way the woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Now, she'd obviously heard that Jesus is the healer. By hearing, faith rose in her heart, and then she said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Then she walked in action with that, and all of that together, when she touched the hem, power flowed into her, and she was healed. And so Jesus looked at her and asked her, he first of all said, who touched me? And as you know, they all said, how can you say who touched you? Everybody's in the crowd touching you. He said, no, I felt power flow from me. And when the woman was revealed, she explained everything. His answer was quite interesting. He said, your faith has made you well. Now, we know it's the power of God. Without the power of God, you wouldn't have been healed. But Jesus didn't say that. He didn't say it was my anointing that healed you. And it was. Without it, the anointing is what did the work. But he said, it was your faith. You acted on what you believed. And because of that action, you were healed. Everybody else that was doing things and saying things and hoping for things didn't get it. But she spoke what she believed. She walked into it. And it manifested. And Jesus commended her, said, that's your faith that made you well. Samuel is being taught the same thing here by Eli. He says, now what you must do is say, say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. And so Samuel went down and lay in his place. In verse 10, listen to this. Now the Lord came and stood and called, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, he's speaking now, based on what he's just been instructed by Eli, speak for your servant hears. And then the Lord started speaking to Samuel what he wanted to say to him. Now the key that I want us to pick up in this is that, number one, God reached out to Samuel for his call. He had a plan and purpose for him, so he spoke to him. But Samuel had to position himself to hear. And how did he do that? Eli gave him instruction and coached him and said, what you need to do is say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. Now that's under the old covenant. So we have a new and a better covenant, the Bible says. So under the new and better covenant, you and I have the privilege of doing exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do is take this as my instruction. If as a child of God, a son of God, I'm led by the Spirit of God. That means if I'm born again, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, that tells me that God is leading us. If you're born again, you're a child of God, and God has given His promise that we have the Holy Spirit. Remember, we've already had a look on our previous studies where Jesus said that I don't do anything unless the Father tells me that he was leaving the disciples, but he'll give them another helper, the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit in them would guide them into all truth, that he will not speak of his own authority, but what he hears, he will speak. Well, that's the born again place that you and I are in, where we have received the Holy Spirit within us to lead us, to guide us. So if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And according to Jesus' promise in John, that with the Holy Spirit in you, He will teach you and He'll lead you. Well, how am I going to hear that? Certainly not by rushing around and in fear and worry and concern, and struggling and battling and, and crying and moaning and complaining. That's not the way to hear. It's saying, just as Eli had instructed for Samuel here, I need to go aside, draw aside, and be in a quiet place and say, speak, Lord, 
your servant hears. And I believe that as we do that, we position ourselves by faith. I am now beginning the action of faith. I'm walking into a place. God is leading us. He's giving us instruction. And it is through revelation. Now, we're not going to hear His voice audibly necessarily. I know very few circumstances and very few people that have actually heard the audible voice of God. I have been led in ways that, you know, for me to say it was audible is by faith. I, I don't know if you were in the room, if you would have heard it as well. I have heard very clearly God speak to me in a way that there is no doubt that God had spoken. It was that clear. But for me to say that if you were in the room, you would have heard it in the atmosphere, I don't think that's the situation. There are times that God has done that. God has spoken. We see in the New Testament, even when God spoke, but others thought it had thundered. It was a noise, a boom, a sound, and they wanted, what was that? But those that God had spoken to and they were open to hearing, heard the instruction. They heard the voice. They heard the Word of God. But that you don't see that all over the Bible. What we do hear are words like revelation and the Word of the Lord came to me. And it's a revelation, a knowledge within your heart. Remember Galatians 4 verse 6, God has sent forth His Spirit of His Son into your heart, crying out, Abba, Father. Now you're not hearing, Abba, Father, God speaking to you in an audible way. You are sensing, I have a daddy. He loves me. Father's with me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. That revelation. Now, that's why I keep encouraging people, take time. Go and spend time with God. Draw aside where the noise is taken away, where all the, the turmoil of life and the problems and concerns, just put that aside, switch off the alarms, pull the phone out the, out the plug, switch off your phone, put it on flight mode, whatever. Just draw away silent. and Spend time praying in the Spirit, just saying, Lord, your servant hears, speak. I hear your voice. And I can guarantee you, get into that quiet place. You'll become aware of His presence. You'll become aware of His love. This overwhelming presence of God will begin to develop in you. Don't, don't struggle and battle. God, please speak, please speak. I need to hear you. Rest, rest. I, I can just imagine Samuel going back to sleep and just all of a sudden being aware God is speaking. And then say, speak, Lord. Your servant hears. And I really believe that if we position ourselves in such a way, then God is able to. He is always speaking. He's always talking to us. But for me to hear it, I need to position myself. And so when I do that and I say, Lord, I am your child and I hear your voice, then you will hear God say, now. And you begin to hear leading, direction. When I came to know who I was called to be, it was just an inward witness, an inward knowing. God has called me to teach the Word of God. It became an understanding. And when I started to walk in that, I sensed the pull. I sensed the direction. I started doing it. And when I did it, I saw the giftings manifest. And so the more time I spent with God, the stronger and stronger it became. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. God has called you. He's got great plans for you. Spend time with Him. Listen to Him. You are His child. And as a child of God, you are led by His Spirit. Jesus specifically said that He would send the Holy Spirit. He'd not leave you as an orphan. But as a child of God, you have a father and a daddy who loves you and by His Spirit is guiding you into truth. Now, I've got something I would like to share with you just after this. Uh, so watch this. I'll be back with you in a moment. If my Jesus says I hear His voice, bless God, I hear His voice. When Jesus spoke, many received by faith the things they believed for. And when believing the things they heard, they saw His promises come to pass. If He said I hear His voice and He says I came that you may have life and life abundantly, I don't want to live in a little specter of life. We have been given a whole book of promises. And when received by faith, we too can walk in abundance in every area of our lives. If He says He supplies all my need, 
Why am I just bleeding for my milk and rent? I want whole life prosperity because he's given me everything. To order your series, contact Allen Back Ministries by either calling our number or purchasing your series online. Most of us are familiar with the scripture where it tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And for me, for many years, it was that I would go and read the scripture. And of course, that does develop faith because the word of God is the voice of God. This is God speaking to us, but now it's been recorded and it is what God has said. So when you read the scriptures, faith does come. But you know that faith also comes when you hear God's specific instruction. When He tells you to do something specifically, a faith rises in you that cannot be shut down. Because when God has said to do something and you walk in that and see the manifestation of what He said was going to happen, you become extremely confident in your walk with God. The ability to hear God speak and guide you and lead you and direct you transforms your Christian life to a whole new level. And so often people battle with that and say, I wish I could hear God the same way. Well, as we've been studying, Jesus said that we would hear His voice. And so as I hear His voice and follow after Him, I'll succeed. But it's me having ears to hear. I need to stop to listen. What does it mean to have ears to hear? And that's what the series is about. I encourage you, get a hold of it, listen to it, It's going to help build and strengthen your faith. And by hearing this word, faith will rise for you to have ears to hear what the Father is saying. And when you hear what the Father is saying, you're going to walk successfully in His call in your life as well. So get yours today. Now, the most important call you can hear is the one I'm about to give. If you've not yet given your life to Jesus, God is calling you home. You say, I wish I could hear God's voice. You're hearing me speak exactly what he said. He said, if you would believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that he's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. That is God's word to you today. And so if you've never yet done that, I encourage you to do it right now, right there while you're watching. Yes, now, while you're there, say this out loud with me. Pray it. You need to hear it. Say this with me. Thank you, Jesus. I know you love me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead, showing that all my sins are paid for and I have been forgiven. So I receive that forgiveness today. Right now I'm cleansed. I'm born again, a child of God. And I make a decision to live for you. From this day on, I serve you. I worship you and I honor you. One day, I will leave this earth and stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You are born again, a child of God. Now, I have a gift I'd like to send you. This is a card that's going to explain to you what's happened now that you are a Christian. There's some guidelines as well. And then this wonderful study program is going to guide you how to read your Bible you stay with it, in one year you will read your entire Bible from cover to cover. And then the CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. It's going to help build and develop your faith. Now that's our free gift to you. We're also going to pay the postage. So you just give us your details. Call us on that phone number, write to us at that address. And when we get your details, we'll send that to you and it'll be with you in a few days' time. Well, that's all we have time for today. We look forward to being with you again tomorrow. And this is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Visit Alan Bagg Ministries online. At alanbaggministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bagg, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Allen Back Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hello, my friend. My name is Alan Bag, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. 
On our website, you will be able to watch our current television programs as well as catch up on any previously broadcast programs you may have missed. You will also be able to find the platforms we are broadcasting on as well as join us for our live streamed services at the Bay Christian Family Church over the weekends and special occasions. If you would like to get hold of some resources taught by Alan Bagg, browse our online shop for some faith building material that will help you further your knowledge on the many topics available. On occasion, there are also some great promotions and free study programs available. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Alan Bagg Ministries. You can also make use of our easy-to-use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. Alan Bag reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Watch Wisdom for Life on our YouTube channel and subscribe to never miss out on any of our programs. For any info, please contact us here at allenbagministries.org. Allen Bag Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Yeah.